Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Barry from h &W Machine Repair again. And today's project is going to be one that you're going to watch this and either go, yes, I can do this, or I think I better let someone else do this. We're going to be disassembling a one and a half horsepower Bridgeport motor. You can see this motor is just off of the head. So it has the stationary and the movable disc off. And we will now get started. So first thing you do is remove your snap ring on a horse and a half. They don't have the um, snap rings with the holes. They have the this type. So let's take a small screwdriver, pop that off. You're done. Take your disc off. So there you go. That was easy. Now we are going to remove the stationary disc. Okay. Get in there. It is. Get in there and loosen it. This one came apart pretty well. Some of them come apart well, some of them are a little harder. Now, this part is going to get catchy. If you're very lucky, you can take a couple pry bars and get under each side, and this thing will just pop loose. And that's if you're very lucky. It doesn't happen very often. And as usual, it's not going to happen here. Your second option is going to be to take a puller. Obviously, this is not the right puller, but you would take a puller up here, get a hold of your disc, and pull this thing up. We have our own way because we have a press and fixtures. So, take our motor. Put it on here, put the fixture up. We have plates that we built that are basically going to give us 360 degree coverage on the plate. And it's going to get noisy here for a minute. Keyway in here, make sure you get your key out. There's your motor key out. We are now ready to start disassembling the motor itself. So again, we have a bench that we do this on that you can see that we already have a hole for the shaft, two pegs to hold it. Okay, you're going to see on the very top, there are four slotted head screws. These are just holding this cover on. And you get one like this occasionally, where the slot is closed up. Oh, that's awesome. But as you can see, this this one's closed up. So, well, get a slot so we can actually get a screwdriver in there again. All right. Take the top cover off and you're going to see right underneath, there's your fan and, and accompanying dirt. Two pry bars. This is a plastic fan. There's no key, no nothing. It's just kind of pressed on. You just get a couple of pretty good jerks and, and it'll come off. Now, you see underneath, you see there are four, they're hard to see, but there's four um, 
bolts are under here we need to get out. They are not always the exact same size. Normally you're going to use a 516 snut driver to get these top four out. There should be a bolt and a washer. We'll have four of these. All right, top cap comes right off, set it aside. Now, you look underneath and you see four more larger bolts. And sometimes they're on really tight. They're on too tight, we get a actually a yep. Okay, this is a 7 sixteenths by the way. I didn't mention it before. What basically what we're doing here is we are releasing the top bearing cap. This is a job that can be done at home. It's just much more difficult than other jobs. Okay, we're going to take the side cover off so we can expose the wiring. Normally this would already be off if you're working on it at home. screws again holding this cover on okay we are now ready to remove this outer housing which this one's coming off easy sometimes these are sticky this one's coming off very easy just push it straight up just fish your wires through and it's off now we're going to remove the um, top bearing cap Again, take your two briars and be careful, obviously, because we're on aluminum, but get under a couple of these tabs and just kind of lightly pop it up. Just like that. This one is coming up with the whole shaft, which means that bottom bearing is not held holding in like it is. So that being the case, we're going to tap this off. Takes a little manipulating. And it's being more difficult. So. I find it very interesting. Alright, here we go. Pop this cap off of here. Okay, again, this part did not come off as normal, but that's alright, not a big deal. We're just going to put this again. If you got a puller, you'd be using a puller. We have a fixture. So we put this in our fixture. Press, pop it right off. Now, you'll notice underneath here there is a washer. Normally it's this type of washer. The way this thing sets is the small side goes to the bottom. The parts that stick down are going to go on the bearing when you put it back together again. Now, the bearings would have to come off at home with a press. Take that one off. 
Pull the shaft out, turn it over, bottom bearing. Now we have our motor shaft. This shaft actually looks to be in pretty good shape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean it off and we're gonna mic it and see how good it is. Okay, now we're gonna mic our shaft. First thing I do is do a visual inspection of the keyway. Um, this keyway looks to be in pretty good shape. This is a horse and a half motor. And so it might, should mic at 9.938 pretty much the whole way down. Um, if, you don't remember the number, just mic it right down by where the snap ring goes, and that's pretty much never wears down there. So, 938, oh, see 937, 935, so we're now lost 3,000s on this. So, this thing has got 3,000s wear in it. Um, I'm not going to say you couldn't use it at that, but I would recommend against it because what's going to happen is in this wear spot, you're going to get a lot of wobble into your disc even if you have new bushings in it. So you don't really don't want it to be more than a couple thousandths. And this one's a little more than that. Obviously this being what I'm doing, I'm gonna replace it. I'd call this very iffy for you. Now we have the disc, we have the motor shaft and rotor out, we've inspected it. We're going to remove the um, um, comp computator off. Generally, this, this is still in there, but because this one was not built correctly, it's gone. So what you're gonna do is take this, take your dead blow, just kind of tap it around here to knock that free. Now we have that free. This is something very, very critical. This never gets laid down here or here. This has to be laid down on its side and on its side only. Because if you get into these windings, you're gonna damage this thing. I just kind of stick them on my shelf. Okay, now on a horse and a half, you see these two holes here? On older models, there were bolts that went through and another cover held this on. As they got newer, they didn't have them. So you may or may not have two bolts here you'll have to remove before you can take it, take the depart the rest of the way. But at this point right now, it's going to be a matter of getting everything cleaned up, painted, new motor shaft and rotor and bearings, and ready to go back together. And that's it.